Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, a few years ago I made a video titled Orchids I Won't Buy. Ever since then, many things have changed, including my subscriber count, so I'm pretty sure many of you don't know that video. I'll link you down below to it. But for the purpose of this video, let's see who was the number one orchid I said I will probably never buy. Now the number one orchid that I promise you I will never have, not even if somebody would give it to me, I would just give it away, is a Ledicia orchid or a Jewel orchid or something like that. And I don't know why, it's not that it doesn't do anything for me, I completely dislike this orchid um, as a plant as well and I cannot figure out why. It has beautiful um, foliage, I, I can see why people find it nice but it really doesn't do anything for me. I absolutely dislike it for some reason, I don't know why, uh, but yeah, that thing will never be in my collection. Yeah, look what I just purchased. Now if this isn't proof enough for you that you should never believe what random people on the internet say, I don't know what is. Yeah, I got a jewel orchid. That must mean something happened. So I bought this orchid from one of my favorite flower shops. I actually went there to buy an Oncidium, which you will see in a different video. I saw my Oncidium, I go to the cashier and my friend says they have brought some jewel orchids and I replied, yes, I know, I'm not interested. I was actually never attracted to these orchids. As you might already know, I consider them very similar to typical houseplants. He insisted that they are beautiful and very, very easy to care for. And he had one on the table next to him. He places it in front of me and says, look, look at the leaves. And I look at the leaves. And I noticed something that I have never ever noticed with this orchid in pictures or in real life in flower shops. I never actually gave it the time of day. I discovered that the little lines on the leaves shimmer. And that kind of did something to me. It brought in my mind a childhood memory, which I'll tell you all about in the outro of this video. It's slightly funny, you'll see. Kind of sad at the same time, but we're gonna focus on the funny part. As you might know, the pattern of this orchid is quite interesting. It has light colored veins on a very dark green background. I never knew though that the lines shimmered and as I took a closer look the lines were kind of golden, kind of rose gold actually and the leaves were very velvety, I knew they were velvety. Yes, the flowers, you know, they're not my favorites, they're no one's favorite to be honest, you'll see when it will bloom, it's uh, nothing to write home about. But the next thing that sold me on this orchid was the packaging and no, I was not blown away by the thin piece of uh, plastic, you see it wrapped around the pot. What kind of blew me away was the fact that not only do we have a title here that says Jewel Orchid, we also have the name of the orchid. It's Ludicia Discolor. This is the proper name of this orchid. We also have a sort of variety trait. It's ruby. There are probably other discolors that look a little bit different, have a different tinge. And in the back, what do you know? We actually have a little description of this orchid and it's uh, translated into some widely spread languages here in Europe. So the company put a few details about this orchid, where it comes from, all of those things and a little care uh, guide here, which, you know, doesn't necessarily say much, but you have the name of the orchid. With the name, you can Google it, you can read stuff in a book, you have the name. Do you know any other orchid? that has a packaging or a tag of the sorts and I'm talking here mainly for Europe. I know that in the USA you do have some orchids which are labeled, you know, the bag babies, how you call them. Here in Europe, sadly, we don't have them. All we have is a little tag that says orchid on it or in very good cases, Cambria or Phalaenopsis or something of the sorts, nothing more. This is the first time that I actually see a name, a proper name on an orchid. So the company who grew this, who provided this orchid, actually cared enough to put a little bit of a packaging around this orchid. They thought it was interesting enough, apart from all the other Phalaenopsis, to actually label this orchid in a way, present it in a way. It's just a nice presentation for a nice orchid. So if the company actually cared enough to do that, such a tiny, tiny effort, but with such a great impact, you know, I started to feel very, very bad that I never gave any chances to this orchid. I was never interested in it. And somebody actually finds it worthwhile to invest this into the orchid. And by the way, the price of this orchid is very, very low, cheaper than any Phalaenopsis actually, um, at least here. 
So both of these things coupled with a sort of a bad mood all of last week, it was a bit challenging emotionally or psychologically wise for me. Anyway, these aspects with my current mood, you know, was just like, you know what? You're wrong. You should definitely give this orchid a try. Just swallow up your words and buy this orchid. And I did. So let's take a closer look at it, shall we? Now, first thing you will see about this orchid is the medium it's potted in. It's in soil, like proper soil, no bark, none of that cocoa choir. So, oh my goodness, we need to repot this orchid. No, this is actually a terrestrial orchid. On the market and in the hobby, we don't have many terrestrial orchids apart from the cymbidiums, which are, I think, the most well-known ones and the Ludicia, of course. So no need to repot this orchid immediately because it's gonna suffocate. Nope, it's actually supposed to be like that. And the medium that people use with this orchid, as far as I can see, I'm not a Ludicia expert, obviously, is a combination of lightweight peat or um, soil that is improved with some perlite, even a combination of uh, bark chips with some soil, just to make things drain a little better, just to maintain things airy, because no plant actually likes very compacted suffocating medium, right? The Odyssea doesn't, but she's actually not an epiphytic orchid. As far as I can see, the roots of a Lodicea orchid are very, very similar to the Paphiopetalum in the sense that they are very fuzzy, but we will discover this when we're gonna repot this orchid because if anything else, we're just gonna make some informational videos, we're gonna see how the root system looks like, we're gonna see if this orchid can be grown in semi-hydro, why not? We're also gonna try to propagate it, so I think we can have some really nice videos with this orchid and if indeed I decide that I don't like this orchid, I don't want to have it, I'm just going to put it in the batch of giveaway orchids when I'm going to do the giveaway. So no worries, this orchid will have a proper house no matter what. As I'm talking to you right now, I like it. I do. I like it. So this is how the Ludicia looks like at a quick glance. But if we look closer, we can see the structures of this orchid and I think we need to make things a little brighter. There we go. Now, as we can see, this orchid doesn't have pseudobulbs. It doesn't necessarily have an axis either. So what does it have? It has a rhizome. Even though each shoot, as you can see, has a stem and has a crown, it is a sort of combination between the, hmm, Maybe the Paphiopetalum and a bulbous type of orchid? No, not really. It actually looks more like a houseplant than anything else. This is part of the reason I was never attracted to this orchid, because it just, it just looked like a houseplant to me. And it behaved like one, and I was into orchids simply because they were just so different. It was a whole new world to discover. With this one, you know, there was no challenge because they're actually very easy to care for. Well, we'll see about that. I'm just speculating now. All of these things that you see at the soil level, they are actually stems or rhizomes that can produce roots. And inside the pot, as we will see, there are very thick fleshy roots. They're not uh, typical terrestrial roots. As I was saying, kind of like a Paphiopetalum actually. But they never go aerial because this orchid is not epiphytic, so all of the roots need to remain in the pot with this orchid. Towards the top of the stems, you can see we can find the leaves and the crown and the flower spike arises from the very center of the crown. I guess we can say it's a terminal spike, even though it doesn't mean the plant will die off. Um, I need to kind of read a little bit more into this orchid. I think this shoot will never bloom again and eventually it will die off as part of regeneration and a new shoot will be produced, I think, from here. Is this a new shoot or just a dirt? It's just dirt. But anyway, as far as I saw from one of these nodes, new shoots are produced. And the tendency of growth of this orchid is rather on a horizontal than a vertical. This orchid doesn't really get very tall. It grows kind of pendant, kind of horizontal-like. So the rhizome will start to spread out and I think I need to get myself a wider pot to accommodate for the rhizomes and to make the circuit look better. The stems themselves, as far as I saw in other videos, tend to droop down. 
and that's quite a nice feature. The root system is also shallow, as far as I saw and as I read. I'm not talking from experience, keep that in mind. Never owned something like this and never knew anybody who did. It's just what I gathered so far and I'm just passing it on to you. So, oh, I see that we have a broken spike here, but that's okay. Um, since we're on the spike subject, let's talk a little bit about it. As you can see, it arises from the top and between the leaves, from the crown. And although this is just in bud, I don't have a flower yet, it produces tiny little flowers, a sort of inflorescence, a cluster on top that is white in color and very, very, very unimpressive if you think about other orchids. The main focus of the orchid, though, is the leaf. Alrighty, so the main attraction is the leaf. There are two things that are beautiful about the leaf. One is the texture. And I hope you can see in the way this leaf shines, it is very velvety. It doesn't feel velvety in the sense that it's not smooth, it doesn't seem to have little hairs, but um, probably on a microscopic level it is, it just gives this impression of velvetness. It's, um, it's not glossy, but it's a little reflective as you can see. And the color is a very dark green with some hints of red. As you could see on the tag, this is supposed to be a ruby variety. On the underside, we do have a reddish ruby, kind of like color. I kind of prefer the top. So let's get to my favorite feature. Do you see the little veins? They're a sort of gold color, not very orangey gold, but it's not white. It's in between yellow, green, and a little bit of ruby, as you can see on the sides. And let me just get you in close so I can get that shimmer. Hopefully the camera will show it. Okay, this is as close as I could get you. And I really, really hope this will show off. My little viewfinder doesn't tell me much, but you should see the veins absolutely shimmer. So I hope it translated on the camera. Let's see with this leaf. Do we see anything? Very hard to tell. I'll see on my computer if it translates. In real life though, and in certain light, you can definitely see this. For whatever reason, when you look at it in the flower shop, in the dim light, you might not notice this, but at the cashier it was pretty bright and I could definitely notice the shimmering veining, which, you know, did it for me. So this is the main attraction of the plant. Nothing much to say right now, particularly because I don't have much experience with it, but as I was telling you, um, hopefully we're gonna find out. I guess it only means that preferences change with context perhaps and with age and I don't know, with life in general. And with the Leticia, I think that's what it was. I was in a sort of moment where I kind of needed some comfort and whatever the heck I saw in the circuit gave me comfort at the moment. So. You know, is it my favorite orchid? No, it's not. But is it beautiful? I think it is. I think I kind of judged it a little bit too harsh and too early. I don't know, but I can tell you that at the time I definitely was not interested in this orchid and did not want to purchase it at all. But there we go, context came that I uh, felt the need to purchase it and I hope I'm gonna like it. If not, it's gonna belong to one of you guys. <laughs> so there we go. Let me know down below in the comment section what do you think about this orchid? Do you have it? Do you own it? Do you like it? Do you have any tips for me? And so on. I would really love to hear your opinions. And you know the drill. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye! Alrighty now, story time about that childhood memory that made me buy the orchid. Word of warning, it has a sad underlayer. And another word of warning, even though I might try to make it funny or try to disregard the background, I don't mean it in a bad way, it's just my way to cope with things and, you know, my family's way to cope with things. So, I don't know if you know this, but Romania used to be under communism and it was so until 1989. Uh, for Christmas. Wow, we're getting there. Anyway, so at the time, on the radio, on, well, TV, there was a lot of propaganda. You know how it is with the dictator, the beloved one, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so at the time there was this propaganda, I'm not even gonna call it advert or anything, on media or in papers or something that talked about the golden era in which Romania was in. This was actually before 1990 and I was a little kid, but I do remember stuff very vividly from that time.
Now this saying, the golden era in Romanian, somehow it translated into a physical object that was golden. I knew what gold was, I just didn't know what era in Romanian, epoca, meant. Now my mom is a very talented person when it comes to making clothes and when we were little she used to make a lot of clothes for us, lots of uh, dresses. She would buy or obtain some material and make some nice dresses for me, which were a lot better than whatever was in the stores at the time. And our downstairs neighbor, she was just uh, learning how to make dresses. So one day she comes with a dress for this festivity of the sorts. I don't remember how the dress looked like, but I remember it had straps. And the straps were a sort of khaki green dark color with golden threads. So as they were working on the dress, I find on the floor a piece of uh, this stripe and I notice the golden shimmers, the golden uh, thread in it, and it makes sense in my mind. Eureka! I discovered the golden era! And of course, I let my mom know that finally I have discovered it! Look! There it is! And at the time it was a little bit dangerous to talk to your kids about political stuff because you would have ended up in jail if the kids started to talk. So all she said was like, yeah, yes, that, bravo, that, that's it. Oh man, I cared for that piece of material like it was, you know, something very, very important. It must have been. Everybody was talking about it and it was mine. I had it. I had it for a while, I remember, and at some point I kind of realized what was happening and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> Mom, why didn't you tell me? Well, so yeah, when I saw that Ludicia on that dark green pattern and that shimmery thread on the leaves, it was just like that memory into my head. And it's not that it was necessarily, you know, good times. It wasn't good times, it was just funny a little because that's what I thought the golden era was. And you know, it's just a memory with my mom, so made me feel a little warm inside. There we go, made me bite the orchid. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Life is strange, as the game says, right? Alrighty, that's it, that's my story. Bye.